Hey, welcome back. Carl, some of you may know, Carl, uh, wanted me to do a video on clutch spring replacement on the QT50 so he could have something to follow along with. So let's do it. What do you say? So I'm going to start off by removing the exhaust just to make it easier to uh, drain the oil out of the clutch and I'll, I think I'll take off this cover and then we'll go from there. I'll be right back. Okay, I have removed this is my first performance pipe I ever bought. The MLM People's Pipe and it's showing its age. I may take this opportunity to repaint it. Yeah, I think I'll do that because it is due. So, um, I think I've got this yes, idea. So now I've got a uh, clean container, relatively clean. Let's drain the oil out. And I will probably just reuse it because this oil is still pretty new. Well, we'll see. Uh, the, the QT50 takes about 11 ounces of uh, W30. Sometimes lately I've been using uh, 15W40. So that, that's coming out in a hurry, isn't it? And maybe I'll put in new oil. All right, I'll tell you what, well, uh, this is why you generally want to take the exhaust off or else you'll get oil all over it. All right, one more lean, it's still coming out. One more lean. All right. Let me strap you back down, Mr. QT. So, uh, why change the clutch springs? I guess I probably should have touched on that initially. Um, uh, when you do anything like uh, a performance exhaust or raise the ports on the cylinder, um, you're basically trading uh, low end for top end. So you're trading a takeoff speed for top speed. And uh, right now, this thing's a 
kind of a dog off the line. And uh, uh, stiffer clutch springs. Oh, darn it. Where's this coming out from? Stiffer clutch springs will uh, basically make the engine rev higher before the clutch engages. So, I don't know what it engages at now, but we'll just say instead of engaging at, you know, 2,000 RPM, it engages at 2,500 or 3,000. So, the engine's going faster when the bike starts off. The RPMs are higher when the bike you know, starts from a stop and uh, you'll get back a little bit of your acceleration. So, that's what we're trying to accomplish here. Alright, so, uh, on the QT50, you want to get your uh, JIS, Japanese Industrial Standard, or JIS compatible screwdriver for these uh, screws. And a lot of times it's just a good idea to replace them all together with uh, Allen head bolts, which I haven't done here. But uh, let me find my bit and we'll pick this up. So here is uh, right there. As you might be able to tell, this uh, screwdriver is a bit blunt, more blunt, not as pointy as a regular one. And I found this is not a JIS screwdriver, but it seems to work just fine for these applications. So, and I've, I think I've been in here recently, so these shouldn't be, you know, ridiculously tight. <laughs> I was holding my breath as I was saying that, right? They better not be ridiculously tight. Or I'm going to have to just blame myself. I guess it wouldn't. And uh, on this, I think these these three uh, top screws are the same size, and the three bottom screws are a different size. And then the drain plug is its own size as well. And as you can see on this one, I painted the uh, cover just to kind of spruce it up a little bit. We'll get the uh, coil out of the way. And when you do this, are we still live? We're still live. Oh, I started over, that's what happened looking at the timer like, what? It's only been filming for two minutes? Uh, when you do these um, clutch springs, what was I thinking? When you do the clutch springs, oh, there's a gasket here. Luckily, you know, there's oil in here and usually the gasket stays intact, but you might so be careful when you pull this off, at least as best you can be, and try to preserve that gasket. If not, you might need a new gasket or you might take other measures. And use a substitute gasket. And uh, what you can do is just a, a big flathead screwdriver, kind of pry this, pry this a little bit. It'll want to stick. Let me see. Do I got all of them out? Yes, I do. Is there another one on the bottom? Kind of. 
and if I wanted, this would be a great opportunity to paint this cover, but I don't know if I'm all... I had this off, so I don't know why it's fighting me now, right? Why are you fighting me now? You just kind of loosen it little by little. What you might be able to do is maybe get two screwdrivers and we'll pry with one and maybe jam another in here. Place this seal. Sometimes they just want to fight you, you know? They just want to fight you. Be careful of dropping anything in your oil bath here. I've done that plenty of times. Maybe I haven't had this off. I could have sworn I did. You know, you, you you work on so many bikes, and you know, I ought to keep a diary what I've done on each bike, right? Because I'm not even sure anymore. And judging by how difficult this is, I might have to be inclined to say that I haven't been in here. So I tell you what, let me work on this off camera. It might be camera shy. All right, I'm going to issue a warning and advise against taking the screwdriver in here and prying maybe a piece of wood because uh, this is an aluminum engine and uh, we don't really want to screw that up. So. Why don't we do a little tappy tappy? Sometimes that can be helpful. It seems like the bottom. Now there's a tab right here that I'm. I'm there it goes. It's jumping around over here. Uh, there's a tab right here which I'm kind of using to pry. We've just come a little closer. I've, I've got, I'm going to have to disagree with my previous assessment that I've been in here before because I don't think that's the case now. Maybe we'll move this oil out of the way. That would be a wise choice. So we didn't catch it all. If there's some way I could use this tab on the bottom to pry, I think we might have a winner. But anyways, I'll continue working on that off camera. I was thinking to myself that a wooden shim might be handy for just this occasion. And of course I might mess up the gasket, but it's a battle. some pieces of the wood to clean out later.
All right, I'll continue off camera. Okay, got it. Oh, the gasket is intact. So I found that on these tab tabs, if you go to the other side of the bike and take like a piece of wood and just tap, put the wood here and tap it with a rubber mallet, you can uh, eventually just uh, pry it off. That's probably the easiest way to do it. There's another tab up on the front. Tab, this is tab here, tab here. So there you go. That one was particularly difficult. They're usually not quite that terrible, but you know, it, it, like I said, it was probably a bit camera shy. So, and then on the, uh, where did she go? The, uh, the drain plug, it's got a uh, copper washer, uh, you can replace that if you desire to be leak free. Alright, now we're getting close. That was the hard part. Let's clean up any wood chips that I happen to introduce into the ecosystem. Now, what's that on the floor? What's, what's going on over here? Okay, I'm just seeing things. Now we've got a uh, snap ring, so I've got my tarantula pliers or my snap ring pliers. And you might be able to do this with needle nose if you don't have snap rings. But we need to remove this snap ring and not snap it across the rim. So, let me get in here. There it is. Got it. And it came off with a snap. Alright. So, you might want to lay down some clean paper towels. So here's our clutch bell. And this is always an oily mess. And uh, then our clutch. So there's our clutch springs. We might be able to accomplish this just leaving it right on the bike as is. We'll give it a try. It may not work. And I've, I've done this just often enough to forget how I did it before. I've got a pretty good idea. So we'll start with a uh, pick, and what I think I can do, let's see, can you, what's your view like? Your view's not very good. We're going to move you. So what I think I can do is just take this pick, and let me think here, Kind of use it to remove that spring. All right, so uh, we just want to take off one at a time. And we're going to replace them with these higher gauge orange springs. And the only thing that's orange about them is there's an orange line on them and uh, it's going to be a bit of a challenge I fear now what's interesting I just noticed is 
this spring, the original spring, has the hooks in the same direction, and this spring has the hooks in opposite directions. But that doesn't matter. I don't think. I think we can just do something like that, and then we'll just, if we can get the pick under it, and it may not be a, a bad idea to wear some eye protection here. Things are moving. We might have to employ the piston stop, but first we'll try it again. Get that clutch to stop moving. Oh, I thought I had it. You could also jam a rag in between these gears uh, to keep them from moving, but I think I can be stubborn about it. And if I can just get that edge over. Oh, it was on. It was on. It's just removing. There we go. There's one. That wasn't so bad, right? We don't need no stinking piston stop. We don't need no stinking rag. Oops. Boy, these uh these stock ones are really wimpy. Now I also have black clutch springs, which I debated putting on. They are pretty stiff. They are the stiffest of all. So I stuck with these. And we're in. And that that easy, folks, that amazingly easy will make tremendous, tremendous difference in your performance. So we'll just double check. That looks good. This one looks good. That one looks good. That looks marvelous. Didn't even take the clutch off the bike. And we'll put our clutch bell back on. We can, there we go. And our little snap ring. Don't lose the snap ring. You won't be a happy camper. Not at all. All right, we got the oily hands again. So let's. Now, of course, I want to test it out, but I. I mean, since I've got the exhaust off, I might as well paint it. And then. Oops. That was interesting. Snap that snappy back on. And that looks good. That looks good. Now, I could have sworn. I was in here before, but I guess I I might be mistaken. So uh, sometimes this little uh, whatever dowel, metal dowel, comes out of its spot here, but don't fret if it does. And come on, Mr. Pepper, there we go. We are back in business, folks. Back in business, ready to rock and roll. Was that easy or what? Don't be scared. It's not that hard. Not that hard at all. Shall I replace? Shall I go with the hex head, the Allen head bolts, screws, whatever you want to call them? The low of the stock ones. Eh, I think I'm just going to put the stock ones back in. So, uh, the short ones go bang, bang, bang. Remember the stator, or stator, stator, mater, the coil, the coil goes there. And what I'll do is, I don't know what you can see, I'm going to do opposite corners first. Oh yeah. And you don't have to, you know, King Kong these. 
be, be nice to the next gentleman that's in here. Anyhow, uh, right now we're doing uh, about 41 on this with the stock cylinder. We're shooting to get a few more miles per hour out of it. Uh, this will definitely make me feel less like a sitting duck when I turn into traffic because this thing is a real dog, especially when it's over over jetted. It was jetted too rich and uh, it was in a hurry to go nowhere at first but then it kicks in around 18 or so miles an hour and hang on. Oh, you know, I get to talking and I just, you know, I forget how things are supposed to go. So the, the cover fits underneath this stator Thing, whatever you want to stand, stator, coil, coil holder. You know, I try to keep these videos short, but I just, I just get rambling, and you know how it is. It just forget about what I'm, the time, just having a good time, I'm just enjoying myself. So, here we go. I do think I changed this oil, though. It, it's a little dirty, but I really didn't notice many particles. So I'm just going to keep that oil. Some of you might not be happy about that decision. Feel free to flame me in the comments below for what a hack I am. And so we just need the uh, drain plug. Where is she? That copper washer is fused on there pretty good. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a new copper crush washer. There you go. How do you like that? How do you like them apples? So you can think of me as just a little less of a hack than you might have previously thought. So, uh, where are we going with this thing? Yep. Actually, that looks like more than 11 ounces. I could be wrong. All right, we're good there. I could be wrong. I don't know. And, uh, this comes in handy. This is a piece of fuel line on this uh, funnel. Comes really handy. It really comes in handy for the uh, filling the transmission up on the Honda Express. But it also comes in handy here. For adding oil, although kind of a slow process. Adding oil to the uh, clutch here on the QT50. Let me see, two, four, six, eight. Ten. I think there's too much oil in here. Maybe I didn't change the oil. I, I usually do that first off. I'd be surprised if I didn't. I'll get one more. We're not going to return all the oil. It's 
So actually the particles still remained in the bottom of the, uh, the bin there. And uh, put the cap back. And then, like I said, I think I'm going to paint the exhaust. So I will not put that back on at this time. So there you have it. That was uh, relatively painless. I enjoyed myself. I hope you did as well. And, uh, Oh, I was going to talk about what else I was going to do to this to go faster. Well, I've got to get the jetting dialed in. Uh, I've got a special piston. I might increase the compression by not running a head gasket. Um, I might go with a SHA clone carburetor instead of the stock card and I might replace this rear tire. So that's what I've got in, 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 in store. We'll see how it goes. And I think here soon, maybe in a week or so, uh, Carl's got a blue QT50. Uh, maybe we can get on film our little tete-a-tetes on the roadway. Uh, he might have some secret upgrades. I have revealed all my upgrades to Carl because he will be watching this video. We'll see what he can do. Uh, and uh, he won the first round. Uh, it's, uh, I think we're about the same top speed, but my acceleration is terrible, so he beat, it, beat me on the route. So, Because uh, I was over-jetted, among other things. But I've corrected. I will correct. Now I'm under-jetted, but anyways, I will correct... Uh, the jetting and I've begun to correct the acceleration with these clutch springs and I you know I remarked something uh, I moved the clip on the needle down so I raised the needle up one it was in the middle originally and I was surprised at, at how rich this thing ran with the needle just one position uh, higher so that's just uh, you know something to note put that in your in your memory banks uh, so I, I've since it was running too rich and I since went back to the middle position and I've got to go to a bigger main jet uh, so it's uh, supplying more fuel at, at full throttle and then the needle kind of controls the mid-range and I think that's good now so all right, I'll stop blabbering on. Hey, thanks for watching.